Hey, hey, thanks for joining back. I am Alice Keeler and we are back to classroom. We're looking at the updated page of homepage of Schoolytics. Now, Schoolytics is for right now Google Classroom users. We are working on getting some Canvas support, so stay tuned for that. But if you are a Google Classroom user, I think you're going to be so excited about this new homepage update because it's really going to make things a lot easier for you. So if you could start by going to backtoclassroom.org, that is our Facebook group where we talk about Google Classroom and tools that work with Google Classroom like Adobe and Moat and Schoolytics and obviously just plain old Google Classroom. And so we can continue the conversation. If you have questions about this presentation, please put them into the comments it's live. But if you're not watching this live, go ahead and join back to classroom.org, join in the conversation, ask questions, and we'll all engage over there. All right, so we are talking about Google Classroom users and things that you can do and not do with Google Classroom. And I don't wanna be a Debbie Downer, but Google Classroom's cool, but there's a few things that could be maybe a little bit better. So who turned in work? I don't think Google Classroom makes that very easy for me. Just who turned in, I just wanna grade things. One of the paradigm shifts that technology should allow me to do is not have every student on the same pacing guide. Right? There's no average time to learn something, so why do I need every kid turning the same thing in on the same day? Or heck, just some kids don't turn things in, or they're absent, or they're sick, or they're quarantined, or for whatever reason, they didn't turn it in at the same time as others. And we know what a headache it is to have to deal with and manage that. In Google Classroom, what do I have to do? I can go to the to review page and I can see stripes of all the assignments and it says if something has been turned in, and you wanna be really good about returning. Return, 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 return in Google Classroom because that gets your turned in number to zero. It also releases their score and does some other things. It's really designed for you to return. So I get that turned in number to zero. So then when a student turns something in, it becomes a one and I know that I need to pay attention to that. But I gotta read the whole list. I don't know which student turned it in. I don't know what time they turned it in. There's a lot of things that I don't know. So it's frustrating because it's really time consuming to hunt down through all those assignments. And my best is best tip is to number all of my assignments. So I'm in number 116 right now. I'm gonna tell you what, I don't scroll all the way down and find assignment number one. Like, oh, did any of my students just finally do assignment number one? I'm not doing that. Not because I'm not willing to, but come on, it's got to be reasonable. And so I'm kind of, you know, what's recent, relatively recent, but that really long ago stuff, I'm not going to see that they turned it in. Now, I think many of us have some great workarounds, but I'd like to show you something that really works. Other things about Google Classroom, like, can I just get a roster? I had a sub the other day and I just want them to be able to mark off who is there. Or I just need to make a list. For myself, I like to check kids off. There's a hundred reasons. I just want a list of the students in my classroom. How do I get that in Google Classroom? Okay, you can, sort of. It's a hack, so it's not easily. Go find any assignment in Google Classroom and you're in the assessment screen where you're grading and you click on the cog in the upper right and you can export grades to Google Sheets, which doesn't just export the roster, exports all your scores and all the assignment titles, so it's slow and then I've got this mess of a spreadsheet that I have to deal with. Now, everyone knows that I love a spreadsheet, so I still don't wanna mess with a mess of a spreadsheet. I just wanna to list to my student names. So I'm gonna show you how to get that really fast and easy. And Google Classroom, honestly, I do like that I can only reuse one assignment at a time because it forces me to reflect and think about what I'm assigning from last year. How could this be better? So as soon as I reuse an assignment in Google Classroom, it opens up to the edit screen and I'm like, yeah, I wanna keep doing this or take a moment to update it and it could always be better. I haven't taught the perfect lesson yet. And so I would like that opportunity to really reflect and update on those lessons. But when I go back to reuse, I have to scroll, 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 scroll. In fact, I have this up here right now, right? Here I'm reusing or I was reusing, uh, forget it now. Uh, I'm reusing assignments in Google, there it is. I'm reusing assignments in Google Classroom and you'll see that 
I pushed refresh. But I'm scrolling through all those assignments from last year and I get to the bottom and I reuse assignment number one. And I really sometimes just feel exhausted trying to reuse assignment number two because I got to scroll all the way back down to assignment number two, which is right above assignment number one. So that's a little frustrating. And then I have a lot of great assignments that I did last year and two years ago and a lot of different reasons that obviously something I did three years ago, I didn't do last year during the pandemic, but I'd like to go back and resurface that one. Well, Google Classroom, I can only look at one class at a time and it's not searchable. So I can't tell you how many times I go to reuse an assignment. Then I'm like, oh, wait, that's not the one I wanted. And then I have to scroll through the whole thing again. So I'd like to solve all of these problems for you with schoolytics.com. So if you go to schoolytics.com, it is free for teachers. So Google Classroom users, this is going to help you get more out of your Google Classroom. And it is faster. Okay, so if you look at the updated homepage, this is new this week, and I'm super excited about it. It has these tiles of action, tiles of action that I can know which students have been doing a good job. I love that the first tile is positive. Like, let's celebrate the students who are doing really well in this class. And then that second tile is our disengaged students. Which ones do you want to check up on? Say a hello. How are you doing? Today I had one of my students come who um, maybe this is the third time they've come and maybe slightly more often, but they've missed almost the whole year. I don't want them to feel like I don't want to go to class because they're like going to get on my case. I want to be warm and welcoming like i'm glad you're here and i want to make a situation that they're happy to be there and not feel like i'm just dumping a bunch of stuff on them so what i like about using the disengaged student is it gives me an opportunity for who do i want to build relationships with who do i want to reach out to and just talk with them how are you doing and so i use it for that although you can certainly use it to help those students to get back on track these are the ones who just aren't doing any work at all Speaking of not doing work, if students are missing work, I can get a list of students who are missing work and it sorts it by who has the most missing assignments. Now, this to me is like super helpful. I just got through doing the progress reports. We had our nine week progress reports due. And if you can believe it, I'm sure it's only my students. A whole bunch of them turned in stuff at the last possible minute. Oh, just my kids. Probably not. So all of a sudden I have all these assignments and of course they're turning in assignment number one and who the heck knows. That's stressful and it takes me a long time to get through those. I blasted through all of it in less than an hour because I was able to go in here, click start grading, and it gives me a list of what assignments were turned in by who and at what time and I sort it by time. And so once I, I got through all of those, then it said I still had a few more, but I noticed that those were turned in after I had started doing this whole process. So those were like really, really late. I'm like, I'm not going to make the progress report this time. I certainly did still get to them, um, but it was just so helpful for me to just zip through. I don't have to like figure out, okay, which assignments do people turn things in? trying to figure out having kids fill out a Google form. I just have this list. It was so nice. Then you can see in the bottom left, I can create a progress report. I can create student groups, reuse assignments. So I'm going to show you that and export roster. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to schoolytics.com and just take a quick look. So I'm going to go to schoolytics.com, schoolytics.com. And then we click login in the upper right hand corner. It logs me right in because I've got my Google account. Now, one of the things to really pay attention to with Schoolytics is the date range. So it does default to the last month. So if you want to go all the way back to the beginning of the semester, then I'm going to put 0801-2021. Actually, sometimes I'll just put in June. I just want it to be before the first day of school. Oh, look at that. I have 206 assignments that I need to grade. This is not my real... Uh, class. This is my PD class. So having a 9.9% .9 completion rate doesn't sound awesome, but those are a bunch of fake assignments that I've created with a lot of fake students. But I can see right on here who completed it, which students are disengaged, who's missing work. But let's start here. Let's do the first one is export roster because everyone knows that this was my idea. Like I've already made this before and I'm like super excited about it. 
because now it's just built into Schoolytics. And I'm just going to generate class roster. It says, which class do you want to roster for? I'll do it for math class. Generate roster is really this easy. First of all, the button says class roster, unlike export grades. So I'm going to view my roster. And all I want in life, friends, all I want is a checkbox. Uh oh, do I not have any students in this class? I do. It's still loading. It's coming. Think about it. It's a fake class. Oh, I have no students in this fake class. Well, good for me. All right. Something about Schoolytics is you can select multiple classes. So I'm going to go ahead and do that one. And actually, before I do that, I, I don't want to give away anybody's email addresses. So I'm going to generate this roster. Okay. I'm going to view the roster. I'm going to pull this out just for a second, just so I can hide the email addresses. So picture this, there are email addresses. It's loading, hold on a second. Oh, my internet must be very slow today. All right, right click and, oh, they redid Google Sheets menus. And so now I'm like, where is this hide column? I'm hiding it, there it is, it's hidden. All right, so here is my roster. Normally there's also a column with their email addresses, but you can see now that I can just easily check off. So use as a checklist with my students. I can print this out, leave it with a sub. Here are the students in class. It's a, it's a spreadsheet. So unlike a PDF, totally customizable. I can add it into an assignment into Google Classroom with view access where I'm checking off which students I worked with so I can keep track of who I want to work with on that particular assignment just for myself, or I can make it edit access to help students to check different things off. Super helpful just to have the class roster. All right, so I'm going to click back over here on the left-hand side. It says home. I'm going back to the home page. So that was one of the items is that I could export the roster. So let's go ahead and start grading. It says I have 52% of my assignments graded. And personally, I find this super motivating. I'm gonna click here on the dashboard. Previously, it was the dashboard that you'd see all of these metrics and I can see this 52%. And that's what I've been going by. And it really helps me to like, my goal is to keep it above 88%. So when I see that, I know that I'm kind of slipping behind before I get so far behind. So I find that very helpful for myself. So, but I'm back on the homepage where I have this new grid where it gives me action, start grading, right? That's what I need to do. So I'm gonna click on that. It's gonna show me the students' names, the assignments, the status, the points, and look at this, time stamp. I'm gonna zoom in on that, a time stamp. And all of these columns are sortable. So I can sort by assignment title, I can sort by assignment status. I can sort by points possible. I can sort by when it was turned in. I can sort by due date, if it was on time, if there are attachments, I can sort by all of these things. It's so, so helpful. So then I'm gonna just go ahead and now watch when I click on this. Now in Google Classroom, when I go to the to review page and I'm like, oh, someone, I don't know who, turned in some work and I click on turned in, it replaces the to review page and I go to the assignment, but then I have to navigate all the way back to that list. So watch this, it opens in a new tab so I don't lose my place. So I'm gonna be able to really quickly go through and give feedback on this assignment and return it. And then I just go to the next one. I just click on the next one and then click on the next one. And if I refresh this page, it actually has about a 30 second refresh rate. So 30 seconds from when I graded it, it is going to update. So I can just keep refreshing and I can see my to-do list pile shrinking and I can go back to the home page and see, whoops, go back to the home page, see that my number of assignments is less or hopefully zero. And I'll tell you what, that feels the best. It feels super amazing. So I really love that I can just start grading, get to work, so much more efficient. Let's look here at the reuse assignments. Reuse assignments. 
It's going to go up. It All this does is takes me to this middle tab library. What the heck is a library? It is a library of your assignments. It also has 42,000 Khan Academy assignments. And we are working on adding other partners and other content. So down the road, you're going to be able to find some assignments that we know work with students and are engaging. One of the things I really like this is it shows me these statistics on my assignments. I had a 50% completion rate, a 41% grade average. Maybe that didn't go over so well. Again, these are fake classes, fake students. Uh, maybe I want to rethink how to engage my students better if I have a 41% grade average. My directions probably were not clear. My directions are pretty much never clear. Uh, but what's lovely about this is I see the full title. I can see which class I assigned it from, when it was assigned. And if you'll notice on here, like these say coding Google Forms, but this one says intro to Google Drive. This is not one class. This is all my classes. And then I can filter them on the side so I can select which class I want to look at. Like I just want to look at that one and then I can easily toggle over or just have multiples of them in there. Now do you see this little arrow next to the add to classroom button? I can read the full description, the full description before I reuse it. So many times in Google Classroom I reuse the post and then I'm like, oh, that isn't the one I thought it was. And I have to start over again. So before I reuse it, I can read the full description. I can see the attachments. These are, I open another tab. I can update them. I can edit them. And I'm trying to see if I can find one with a Google form. Probably this one, intro to Google forms, has some Google forms. See, it has a little forms icon on there. So I can preview, update, fix it before I reuse it. So I can see, do I want to do this again with my students? And then all I have to do is click add to classroom and choose the class I want to add it to, and it puts it as a draft into that assignment. Now notice that when I do that, I don't have to scroll. I did number one. Now the assignment right next to it, I can add that one. It doesn't lose my place. This is such a time saver. i create my draft. So then what you would want to do is after you create your drafts, you can go ahead and view it in Classroom. The API for Google Classroom doesn't allow for the rubrics or the grading categories or a few of the other things. So you're just going to want to go ahead and update when do you want the due date, what grading categories and things that you want it to be. So that's hovering on the assignment, three dots, edit, and then you can go ahead and update it to be however you want it for this year. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cancel. There's so many more things you can do here in the content library, but I just want to show you how easy it is for me. Like if I scroll down here, it's not going to move. I'm going to reuse number 18 and then I'm going to reuse number 19. Where's 20 on here? Well, I'm not sure where 20 is, right? Great. So I'm going to go up here to the search bar, number 021, number 020. I can search. Oh, it's because I don't have a number 20. Good for me. Sometimes I skip some numbers, but that's why I couldn't find it. I'm going to get all my classes. If I just type in baseball, it's searching across all my classes and finding all my assignments that mention baseball. Notice this title does not say baseball, so it's reading the description that it has baseball in it. So I have these four assignments that mention baseball. This one has it in the title, but the others do not. I love how I can search and find things to reuse my assignments so much faster and easier. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the home page. I'm going to use the three lines menu in the upper left, select dashboard, which takes me to the home page and dashboard on the side. All right. And the reason why the tiles are now more rectangular is because I'm zoomed in. So if I just zoom out, it'll put it back into this nice little grid. All right, so that's what I wanted to show you today. There are so many more things that you can do with Schoolytics. Again, it's free for teachers. You can make progress reports. You can create groups. But let's just start easy. Get a list of your students, export the roster, reuse assignments, and start grading. Those three things alone are going to save you a lot of time and make you a lot happier. So thank you for joining me. Please make sure you join in the conversation at backtoclassroom.org. Backtoclassroom.org, that is our Facebook group, where if you have any questions, 
We would love to hear from you. And thank you for joining us for the updated homepage of Schoolitics.